Hello everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we're going to be solving a very hard problem on mechanics. This question is from the 2016 Engineering Admission Assessment for Cambridge University. Just a little disclaimer that this is not an official solution, this is just my take on the solutions and if you spot a mistake feel free to get in touch. Okay, well let's have a look at this problem. So we have a stunt cyclist that is preparing a new trick and the track on which he will perform the trick is shown below. Okay, so the cyclist descends from A to B. So he starts riding in A and riding down slope from A to B, he transfers an amount of energy E from his muscles. So he's not just uh, coasting down the hill, he's providing some input energy. Okay, that's fine. And uh, the, cycli the cyclist leaves the track at B, traveling horizontally initially. He lands on the track at C, a distance L, down the slope. Assume that the rider bicycle system can be modeled as a point of mass M. Okay, that's always useful. That frictional forces and air resistance can be neglected. Okay, well, let's have a think about the uh, cyclist motion. The question that is asking us is what is the vertical component of the velocity of the rider bicycle system that is parallel to a slope? So what is the component along this side of the slope? The easiest way to tackle this problem would be using energy. Well, what is the total energy in this case? So, the cyclist will have some kinetic energy, which will be a half mv squared. And that is the kinetic energy at point B. So, well, this kinetic energy is actually equal to the sum of the potential energy mgh plus the energy that's been inputted into the system which is just e okay well let's just rearrange that for v and what we're going to find is that v squared will be equal to let's see so what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply by 2 and then i'm going to divide by m so it'll be 2 mgh plus 2e now let's divide by m which means that this will get cancelled out and this here will be uh, divided by m Okay, well, this means that V, on the other hand, will be equal to the square root of 2. And then we're going to have GH plus E over M. Okay, perfect. So now we have an expression for the velocity of the bike as it's starting to, just at the instant, it leaves the ground at point B. Well, how can we figure out the component, which is parallel to the surface. Well, let's use a little bit of uh, vectors to do so. So let's draw our vector triangle. First off, I'm going to draw the component which is parallel to the surface, and this is just VA. So the diagram here is not up to scale, by the way. This is just a vector diagram just for illustration purposes. This is VA, and we have the resultant speed, which is just horizontal according to this diagram. So I'm just going to draw that V vector here. This here is V, and we also have the normal vector, or the perpendicular component of the speed, which I'm just going to draw here so that it reaches the other vector at 90 degrees because VA, the parallel and the perpendicular component, well, they have a 90 degree angle between them, and this here is VN. Now, remember, VA has an angle of theta to the horizontal so this angle here is theta well hang on a minute this is now a right hand triangle so i can just use some trigonometry to figure out what va is for instance i can say that the cosine of theta is equal to my adjacent over the hypotenuse so cosine of theta will be let's see my adjacent is va and my hypotenuse is v okay this means that va 
will be equal to v cos theta. So in other words as well, v will be equal to, let's just rearrange for v because that's in this equation here. And um, we can, or we could actually do just directly substitute this back in because va is just v cos theta and we know that this here is equal to v. So therefore, va will be equal to the square root of 2 gh plus em cos theta. And this is our answer. Let's see, hopefully it is one of those answers up here. And aha, uh -huh, perfect, it is answer E. Okay guys, so let's have a look at part B. The cyclist leaves the track at B at time t is equal to zero with initial speed v. But considering motion parallel and or perpendicular to the slope and or otherwise, find an expression for the time taken to land at C. Now, first of all, we can see that uh, they've given us a little bit of a hint. So I'm going to be considering motion either parallel or perpendicular to the slope or both. The otherwise is typically a harder way of doing the problem. Okay, well, let's have a look at my diagram. I've actually drawn a little uh, force diagram over here just to help you guys understand what's going on with this question. So this thing, this is essentially a projectile motion question that has been flipped over on its side. So typically in projectile motion, the acceleration once we leave the ground is uh, is always g directed vertically, and that's fine. But in this case, we're just changing our frame frame of reference. So essentially, what we're doing is we're taking this and we're flipping this like this horizontally. Now, how are we going to do that? Pretty simply. First off, we're going to consider that the forces acting are going to have two components. So we have the force of weight, which is acting straight down, and this will have two components, Fa, which will be the parallel to a slope, and Fn, which will be perpendicular to a slope. The acceleration will have exactly the same components. I included the force because the force is just a little bit easier to visualize, and I could easily just rub this out and just write um, the the, um, the components of the acceleration. So I'm going to have the overall acceleration straight down, then I'm going to have the parallel um, acceleration, which will be horizontally along here, and then the perpendicular acceleration, which uh, let's call that the normal acceleration a n. Now the time to land at C will be fully determined by the perpendicular component of the acceleration, which is a n. And uh, to tackle this problem, we're going to be looking at this in the perpendicular direction. So, uh, so let's let's do this. Uh, just zoom out a little bit so that we can write. So uh, I'm just going to make a little note that all of my equations are perpendicular to the slope. So now. I'm going to use s is equal to ut plus a half a t squared. Now here is something really, really interesting. Now, when the uh, when the rider lands, so I'm going to write this down over here. But when the rider lands, the displacement s is equal to zero because this is my perpendicular displacement. So this is the perpendicular displacement from the ramp. And this is critical. Okay, well, I can just say that zero will be equal to my initial speed. Now in the vertical plane, this will be given by v sine of theta. Now remember this comes, uh, if you're not sure where this expression comes from, think back to our triangle in the previous question just by using sim simple trigonometry. We can say that this component here is um, v sine theta times t and uh, let's add in plus a half a t squared plus a half. Now my acceleration will be in the uh, in the perpendicular plane. So this will be a n t 
squared. Okay, so let's find an expression for a n. 0 will be equal to v sine theta t plus a half. Now my perpendicular acceleration will actually be given by the following expression. The angles are now going to flip and the reason for that is because the force is now directed, uh, the resultant force is directed vertically downwards whereas V was before directed uh, horizontally. So if this here is my resultant acceleration, if we think about it in terms of similar triangles, uh, well, the 90 degree is here, the 90 degree is here, so this would mean that this angle here would be theta. So this means that the perpendicular acceleration, a n, will be equal to um, a cosine theta. Now, the overall acceleration, a, is minus g, so this will be minus g cosine theta. And this uh, it's quite a tricky part. It comes it stems from the fact that these two are similar triangles. Okay, well let's substitute that back into here. So this would be a plus a half minus g cosine theta. And then there will be t squared. Okay, now let's do a little bit of rearranging. So what we're going to get is that uh, V sine theta is sine theta T is going to equal to a half G cosine theta T squared like so. We can divide by T. So I can get rid of that and that. And what I'm going to get is that V sine theta is equal to a half G cosine theta T. And let's zoom out. And what we're going to get afterwards is that T will be equal to, let's rearrange this carefully. So this will be equal to two times V over g times sine of theta over cosine of theta which is equal to 2v over g multiplying by the tangent of theta. Now hopefully that's an answer. Let's have a look. 2v g tan theta. Yep, that will be answer b. Okay, part C, how far along the slope will the cyclist land? In other words, what is the value of L? Okay, well, this is actually kind of like a classic projectile motion problem in which in which we first find the time of flight and afterwards we're asked to find the range. However, the only difference is that in this case, this is, um, everything is now slanted by an angle theta. Well, in order to find out the range, all I'm going to do is just use use the same equation again, so S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared, however this time it will be in the parallel direction. So in the parallel direction, really, really important. Okay, so um, let's figure out um, the, because now I'm using this in the parallel direction, pretty much everything will flip um, the um, the trigonometric function. So if something was a sine, it would then be a cos because if v sine theta was in the perpendicular direction, this now will be v cos theta in the parallel direction and vice versa for the acceleration. And well, the acceleration will now also be positive. So in this case, this will be equal to v cos uh, theta. Now we've already got the time, which is here, 2v times 2v over g tan theta, like so, plus a half. Now, now the acceleration is going to be plus g sine theta, before, before it was minus g cos theta. So plus a half g sine theta, and uh, multiplied by t squared, which is 2v over g tan theta. Let's not forget to square this. So this here will be squared like so.
Now let's tidy up this expression. We can take a factor of v times v times 2 over g because here we also have 2 times v over g and this is squared. So let's have a go at tidying this up. So I'm going to take a factor of v squared over g and what I'm going to left what I'm left with is actually over so b 2v squared yep so this will then be equal to cos theta tan theta plus now let's be quite careful with the expression above in fact just to avoid any confusion i'm just going to rewrite this the expression above just to show you guys how to factorize this so i'm just literally just rewriting this so it's going to be v cos theta times 2v tan theta over g plus and then it's a half g sine theta now this is equal to 4v squared tan theta squared over g squared. Well, this is going to cancel out like so, and this is going to cancel out as well. So if we think about it, um, after we've taken out a factor of 2v squared over g, all that we have left is sine theta and then multiply by tan theta squared so let me just write that plus sine theta tan theta squared okay well let's use a couple of uh, simple trig identities to tidy this fraction up to find our to find our parallel displacement s which is really is the length of l um, in fact just to be absolutely precise rather than s here i should just write here this to be l uh, okay anyway so my displacement will be equal to 2v squared over g uh, multiply by cos of theta now tan of theta is sine over cos isn't it so sine of theta over cos of theta I'm gonna get some cancelling out yay multiplied by sine of theta then I'm going to have sine of theta over cosine of theta and this is squared okay so we're nearly there guys what we're going to get is 2v squared over g multiplied by sine of theta because that's going to cancel out plus sine of theta raised to the power of 3 divided by cos of theta squared okay well let's take a factor of sine out of this expression so 2v squared over g sine of theta what we're going to get is 1 plus sine squared over cosine squared okay well let's carry on with this so this will be equal to 2v squared over g sine of theta now let's put everything under a common denominator so this will be equal to cos uh, theta uh, cos squared sorry plus uh, sine of theta squared divided by cos of theta squared and like so now remember sine squared plus cos squared will actually give us one so this whole expression will be equal to 2v squared g uh, sine of theta times 1 over cosine squared. So the overall expression should be 2v squared uh, sine theta over cosine theta squared. Okay, so, wow, this was quite a lot of work, but a really, really fun problem. So let's see which answer that, that does that lead us to. So 2v squared over g sine theta. So that will be correct answer will be C. 
Okay, part D. As part of the trick, the cyclist wants to clear an obstacle placed on the slope between B and C. To give the cyclist the greatest chance of clearing the obstacle, it should be placed at the point at which the cyclist's perpendicular distance from the track is the greatest. So where should be placed? So what distance from B should the obstacle be placed? Okay, back to our trusty diagram. We've done quite a lot of work already. Now, this question is all about the trajectory from uh, that the cyclist takes as uh, they're traveling along here. So let's say that this here is the point. The trick here is that due to conservation of energy, the time spent in the first half, the half which I'm actually highlighting right now, let's pick a more contrasting color. So let's pick green for instance. The um, the geometrical half of this of the trajectory of the cyclist will be equal to half of the time and once again this is a projectile motion concept that is typically used in problems where you we're doing exactly that however it's all at an angle so um, in order to do so let's uh, consider using the suvat equations once again and uh, we're going to be looking at the equations that are parallel to a slope once again so well uh, let me just write down over here let's uh, just write down so once again we're looking at equations which are parallel to a slope okay well let's do the same process of factorizing here we have a factor of v and v so it's going to be v squared over g so i'm going to take out a factor of v squared over g what i'm left with is cos theta tan theta plus a half and uh, this g is going to cancel with this one i've taken the factor of v squared over g out so what i'm left with is going to be a half sine theta tan theta squared okay so let's just carry on and this will be v squared over g cos theta times sine theta over cos theta because that's what tan theta is plus a half sine theta and then it's um, kind of the same process as before multiplied uh, by sine squared so it's going to be sine theta squared divided by cosine theta squared in the exam feel free to do this a lot quicker uh, mentally however because this is an explanation walkthrough video i'm going for as many steps as i possibly can so the cosines are going to cancel and what we're left with is v squared over g then we have a factor of sine theta plus a half sine theta to the power of three divided by cos theta squared now does this start to look like one of the answers so it's already starting to look a little bit like answer d and uh, we can show very quickly that this will be the correct answer because all we need to do is say that this is equal to v squared over g and then take a factor of sine theta and what we're left with is one plus a half uh, sine theta squared over cosine theta squared which is tan theta squared so this over here is the correct answer now well done guys you've gone through a very very challenging problem we've done a lot of really interesting physics and maths when well done for following this question thank you very much for watching if you found this video useful please consider subscribing and i'll see you in the next video